Good morning, beautiful. Hi, I'm Jordan James, and this is Good Deeds Buffalo. On Good Deeds Buffalo, the Western New York community will nominate someone for their good deed. This person would be involved in the community, and oftentimes our beacon of hope and kindness. And by merit, I select someone to showcase and thank. In this episode of Good Deeds Buffalo, I will introduce you to Tom Shu, the founder of Bridget's Battle Foundation, a nonprofit organization that was started after Bridget Shu passed away in January 2014 after a six year battle with breast cancer. This event was created to help raise funds and awareness towards prevention and a cure. Bridget was a fan of Buffalo area live music, therefore this signature event of the Bridget's Battle Campaign is an annual band jam benefit featuring Western New York local music. Of course, I'll get you up to date on all the good events and news happening around town in Jordan's Good Events and News. Then we'll meet Rob and Skyler, a father-daughter duo on a mission to collect and donate 800 backpacks to those in need. After just 30 hours, they raised over $700 with help from his employer, Facilo Hyundai of Grand Island. The community then started jumping on board to help. Learn why they are doing it, learn how you can get involved and help in this episode of Good Deeds Buffalo. Enjoy the show. Joining me now in studio is Tom Shu, founder of Bridget's Battle Foundation. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jordan. Great to be here. Welcome. So, Tom, what is Bridget's Battle Foundation? Well, uh, I'll give you the short version. Um, uh, my wife passed away from breast cancer in 2014. She got diagnosed in 2008. She was treated at Roswell for those years. Uh, while she was still alive, we actually started doing fundraising for Roswell. Um, with a series of events, including local bands from Western New York. So we started to donate some money at that time. After she passed away, we kind of formalized the foundation, um, formalized the events that we had every year. So since uh, 2014, we've been raising money under the Bridget's Battle banner. And uh, in total, since we started in 2010, we've raised about $65,000 for the Angel wow. Fund at uh, Roswell. And I can tell you a little bit more about that as we go. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a, a huge amount of money raised. And I just want to say, I, I'm sorry to hear about your wife. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad that you took the trauma of losing somebody and turned it into something to help others because it's so important that when you go through something that you, you try to channel it some way that's healthy, and I think you've done that, Tom. Well, thank you. I th really think that came from Bridget herself, because in the middle of her disease and her treatment, this is something she wanted to do to give back. I mean, she was treated tremendously at Roswell. Um, you know, the, the doctors and the nurses and the support staff there were great to her. I mean, she really grew to love those people over the time that she was treated there. Uh, and her attitude about her disease was she wasn't going to let it define her. If you talked to her about what was going on with her, inevitably it turned around and you ended up talking to her about your issues and your concerns <laughs> and your problems. So she was always like that. Um, so we kind of latched on to that while she was alive and we wanted to continue to carry that on in her memory after she passed. Yeah, and you, you, know, you talk about Bridget. Can you tell us about, more about her? You said you like to support the local community. Sure, she was a big music fan, which is why when we started to do this, uh, every event we've done since we started has always had live bands involved okay. with it. So we, we've always tied that aspect into it. Um, you know, we, we focus on her family and her friends. Um, we've tried to grow the events that we do in the organization beyond that, but really that's at the core of it, was to do something for the people that were close to her every year to remember her and to kind of pass it forward. And, you know, since we've had the foundation, we've obviously grown it to the point where now we've reached out to a lot of people who never knew her personally, but, right. you know, they're plugged into Roswell Park, they're plugged into cancer causes, they're plugged into going to see bands and having a good time. Mm -hmm. And for any of those reasons, they might come and support us and uh, help us with our mission. Yeah. And so when, when Bridget got sick, how was the process with, you know, we have Roswell here in Western New York. We're lucky to have that. Absolutely. But what was the process for you and your family, you know, going through that? I know it was challenging. Sure, it was. Um, she, relatively speaking, tolerated her treatment very well. She had, she was very young when she was diagnosed. She was in her early 40s, I want to wow. say. Um, so at that stage when you're diagnosed, and it was pretty serious, it went to stage four qu pretty quickly and uh, metastas metastasized pretty quickly as well. Mm. Um, so at, 
when you're that young and you're going through that, they're going to hit you very hard. They're not so concerned about your quality of life for those years. They want you to have quantity of life so you can be with your family and with your friends. Right. So her, her treatment was rugged, but she tolerated it very well. Uh, she, you know, she stayed pretty healthy. She had a really great attitude about it. Uh, as I said, the, uh, you know, the support staff at Roswell Park was, was incredible to her. Uh, we obviously didn't have the outcome that we wanted, but her case was very unique and very specific and very challenging, as a lot of cancer is. Um, they threw everything they could at it. She was in a few clinical trials. Um, it wasn't until the very end that it really became tough for her. And at mm -hmm. that point, you know, it, it became what it was. And, you know, that's just how it was. She's moved on to another phase now. So, yeah. And, and more towards the end, what role did music have to play for her? I'm sure it was what helped her get through. Yeah. I mean, for her and for me, too. Absolutely. Kind of by translation, um, you know, music became our way to, to hang out with our friends and have a good time and not so much take our minds off what we were going through, but, you know, it, it's funny. I always thought if I was ever, if I was ever stricken or somebody close to me was that that would just mm. take over my life or our lives. Right. That every day would be about that and nothing else. And I found it really isn't. You live a normal life every day, most day. Days go get treatment. If you feel okay, you just move on. And in most cases, she did feel okay. Yeah. Um, so... You know, live music and going out with our friends and doing things like that wasn't so much an escape. It was just a more of a reinforcement of regular life and yeah. trying to have a good time and go forward, even though we were going through this. I think you were alert, you were kind of playing the symphony of life, if you will, <laughs> right? And Absolutely. you were kind of playing that through the music Absolutely. when you went out. Yeah, for sure. So the band jam benefit. What is that? And can you tell me about sure. that? It happens every year. Yep, we started as I mentioned. Um, um, we, we started at a, a, a restaurant called The Dockside in North Tonawana in 2010, and we worked with the couple that owned that uh, facility, Dan and Gloria Wingrove. Mm -hmm. um, and we, they had bands there. Our band was one of the bands that played there at the time. Uh, so we collected a bunch of our friends that were in bands, and we had a big event there in 2010, did it again for a couple years after that. Um, and we started to raise money, and Dan and Gloria were very generous and matched dollar what? for dollar what we, wow. what we um, raised on those days. Uh, after Bridget passed, then we did it on a larger scale at a couple of other facilities, and we've landed now at Riverworks um, on, the, on the river near downtown to be nice. a host for the events going forward. But we were friends with a lot of musicians from going to see them at the dockside and other places. So when yeah. we put the call out for people to participate with us, we were overwhelmed by the response. And that's continued to this day. 12 years later, we still have a lot of the same musicians and the same bands, if they're still together, yeah. helping us this year. Some of them that's go exciting. all the way back to 2010 and did the first one with us. So And you're kind of making a cool. family and, and building a yeah. community oh, yeah. around music, and it's, it's wonderful. Um, what, other, what other things do you have going on at the event? We have um, our virtual uh, prize raffle this year. The last two years, because of COVID, we really scaled back that aspect of it. We did some door prizes and we did some silent auctions. But in past years, we've had as many as a couple hundred different prizes that we've raffled off, whether it's gift cards to restaurants, theme baskets, wow. sports memorabilia, music memorabilia, things like that. We're bringing that back this year. We're going to do it virtually with an app on people's phones, too. So it'll be really easy and fun to participate in that. We're looking forward to doing that again. Uh, we're going to have some vendors there. Um, we'll obviously have the music going on. Riverworks has food and beverages for everybody. Wow. Um, we'll have some, you know, games for family. It, it's a family event. You can bring your kids if you want. We'll have things for them to do as well. So yeah, it really I, is a, a full day of fun. It's not just the music. There's a lot of other things going on as well. And it's only $10 to yep. get in, right? So $10 that's pretty donation. simple. Um, um, just at the door. We don't, we don't really do any pre-sale, so it's just simple. Just Give us 10 bucks at the door and you're good to go. <laughs> well, it sounds good for a day of fun, I'd say. Now, you mentioned some other events, but what other events do you have throughout the sure. year? We've um, partnered with some other venues around the area. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Pearl Street Properties. Uh, Riverworks is part of that. Also, uh, Pearl Street uh, Grill and Brewery downtown and the Brawler's Deli in the basement on Pearl and Seneca Street. Um, we've done quite a few events with all their properties over the last few years, always having a live band and doing some kind of, you know, prize raffle or even 50-50 split uh, to raise money through the year for what we do. 
again, how can people help uh, with Bridget's Battle sure. Foundation? We, um, our primary reach out is through Facebook. So if you go to Bridget's Battle uh, on Facebook, just do a search uh, on those two words, or it's facebook.com slash Bridget's Battle, all one word. Uh, you'll find us there, information about the Band Jam, which is uh, the Sunday of uh, Thanksgiving weekend, November okay. 27th. And um, you can find out about the information there. You can click on going or interested and add your, add your name to the list of people that we expect to be there, which is great. Um, we don't always have an online donation button set up, but you, know, you can look for that there too. Sometimes we do. Um, we like to focus our fundraising around the events we do as opposed to just having it be there all the time. Uh, really the nature of what we do is tied to having the music involved so wow um you know we we you know we'll take your money any time <laughs> of year but you know I, I i my vision for this is that we're just not a year-round fundraising organization right. with that out there we want to focus on the events we do and when we have an event we usually have an online donation Perfect portion of it for people that want to help out but can't necessarily come. So as the event gets closer, you would see that on Facebook as well. Cancer affects so many people and to take something so uh, terrible and then turn it into something to help people is just sure. so heroic. I want to just say real quickly our specific mission within the Roswell Park Alliance um, is we support the Angel Fund which was started by a philanthropist uh, named Phil Hubble mm. uh, who made a big donation to Roswell. Uh, in the beginning of this and since then they've latched on other people that helped to contribute to that as well and that is actually the financial aid arm of oh, the alliance what you, what you which do. is um, if families patients are having trouble paying non-medical expenses when they're in treatment they can call on the angel fund for help with that so we wanted to kind of narrow our focus into something that specifically help Just people the, within roswell and help people in need and that's where we've uh, focused. we've focused ourselves in the last well, few years certainly helping western new york awesome yep I reached out to local businesses and friends via social media to help because I wanted to reward you for your continuous good deeds in Western New York. Um, and with ve the very generous support of Simply the Best Cleaning Services, I am so happy to gift you this $75 wow. gift card. <laughs> Thank you. I know this Appreciate is just that. a small token of our appreciation of you. And what does Simply the Best Cleaning Services do, whether it be a post-construction cleanup, a debris or junk removal, a deep clean or moving cleanest services, nicotine damage cleanup, or a one-time clean or a hoarder comb cleaning, Simply the Best Cleaning Services has your back. Call them at 716-909-6847. When we return, it's time for Jordan's Good Events and News. Then we'll meet an inspiring father and daughter duo on a mission to collect 800 backpacks for those in need. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jordan James. Now it's time for this segment in which I talk about all the good events and news around your hometown and Jordan's good events and news. If you'd like to submit your good deed, good news, or event story to be considered for the show, just visit gooddeedsbuffalo.tv and click the Submit a Story tab. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention Western New York Chapter presents Buffalo Out of Darkness. The Out of Darkness Community Walk is a journey of remembrance hope and support. It unites our communities and provides an opportunity to acknowledge the ways in which suicide and mental health conditions affected our lives and those we love and care about. The walk will take place September 18th, 2022 at Canal Side. Registration starts at 8.30 a.m. While there is no registration fee to participate, local businesses and individuals are encouraged to get involved and sign up to walk and set a $150 fundraising gold to help support AFSP's work to stop suicide and receive the official walk t-shirt. Donations are vital and are very much appreciated. Help show the world how many of us are together to fight suicide by registering for the Buffalo Walk at asfp.org forward slash buffalo today. Roswell Park Cancer Institute is teaming up with the men allied for the need to understand prostate cancer to hold their 11th annual Cruising for a Cure, presented by West Her, with classic cars, trucks, motorcycles, and more. 
It will take place September 24th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center at Elm and Carlton Street. They'll have free prostate cancer education and early detection from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. with a one-on-one educational consultation completely free for early cancer detection for men at least 45 years old. Men at higher risk, including African Americans and those with a family history of prostate cancer, are encouraged to attend. They'll have 20 plus awards, door prizes and raffles, a DJ, food for sale and goodie bags. Proceeds to benefit men for the need to understand prostate cancer for prostate cancer research. I just had to tell you guys about this good news. Wheels for Workers 716, a new local nonprofit organization, has been formed in Western New York that provides bicycles to people and or families in need around Buffalo and Western New York who wish to work but lack basic transportation. They even take donated bikes and fix them up and give them away. These photos here are from June 22nd when they partnered up with Journey's End to distribute 25 bikes, helmets, and locks to those in need. Since their start, they've actually provided over 200 bikes, helmets, and locks to Western New York, and they're not slowing down anytime soon. To get involved and do your part, head over to GoodDeedsBuffalo.tv and click the Good Events in News tab. We'll be right back to continue our show. Make sure to follow us on all of the latest social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome back to Good Deeds Buffalo. Joining us now is Rob and Skylar Schuster, the father-daughter duo on a mission to collect 800 backpacks for those in need with a campaign called Give Back with Backpacks. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jordan. You're welcome. So Rob, what is Give Back with Backpacks? So this was my way of trying to accomplish a couple things. I wanted to sort of show everybody um, you know, what we support and kind of teach people that if we teach our children about unity and coming together that the world can do you know incredible amazing things and, and help people out when in times of need yeah so when when did you start this so I started this um, just now where uh, this Wednesday will be two weeks total um, so uh, about 13 14 days in so far Wow and why again did you want to start this campaign so my employer, Fusilla Hyundai of Grand Island, we really do try to promote, you know, humility, gratitude, and, you know, serving others. And we also try to do that for, you know, our employees as well as, you know, our families. So if we were to teach an entire generation about positivity, unity, and giving back, you know, imagine where we would be 20 years from now if we raised an entire generation based on just giving back. Absolutely. And, you know, that totally makes sense. We need to encourage people to do good good things for the community, but also just be an active member in your community, right? And that's kind of what you're doing. Now, Skylar, where are we today in regards to the backpacks that you have raised or collected? 688. 688 backpacks, that's huge. Has it been fun getting together with your dad and the community to collect those backpacks? Yes. Yeah? Well, that's just wonderful. Now, Rob, is there some personal reasons why you decided to do backpacks or? Um, I think when you have, um, you know, when you have a child, you know, you start to view the world differently. And, you know, my daughter's seven, she goes to the Alden Primary School. And also, you know, a lot of my friends now, you know, are at the age where they're starting to get full career jobs. And that includes teachers. So yeah. when I see them on social media and or I talk to them personally and I hear how they end up, you know, splitting the difference between their their kids coming to school at the beginning of the school year and maybe not having the bags or not having the supplies. And, you know, I've heard that they spend up to 500 or a thousand dollars of their own money mm. to try to cover that gap and not leave the kids, you know, that aren't capable in a position where they don't have what they need. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to have those resources you need to go to school. Skylar, do you have a backpack picked out yet? Yes. Yeah, what color is it? Um, blue. Blue? Guess what my favorite color is? Um, red? Yes. <laughs> Good guess, because I'm wearing red. So if it was me, I'd be going to school with a red backpack, y'all. So um, now, Rob, what does it mean to have the support of Facillo Hyundai, you know, Grand Island, your employer, to step up and help support your goal? It's fantastic. Um, I mean, I think 
I, you know, when you, overall, when you look at a lot of things, um, a lot of people, you know, I, I think we look at a job as just that, like we have to go to work, we have to do this, we have to do that. Um, whereas we try to support a culture that is, we get to go to work, we get to help people. Um, to us, I mean, to me personally, there's no such thing as just a car. Right. You know, every car, you know, I work in finance, so I, I work with every single person who's picking up their car. And we get to work with a lot of people who are getting their first car or maybe the first one that they got a loan on instead of buying it off the side of the road. Um, we've done gifts, you know, uh, family members that are buying gifts for their family members coming home from the military oh, wow. or gifts for Christmas or gifts for other holidays. Um, you know, and I think what we talk about is, you know, that humility and that serving others and things. And I think that my job really proved to me, it's sort of like a, a, a you know, it's sort of like a mirror effect, right? So yeah. my idea is, hey, I'm, I'm helping because you're teaching me and I want to prove to you that you're teaching me by, by doing this and giving back. And I mean, within 48 hours of me posting the original video of us getting the first backpack and sort of putting the idea out there, um, my employer supported me. I mean, they donated over $750 oh, just wow. themselves within 48 hours, which got us on a, a really quick head start. Um, so having them, you know, support me and share it around and, and, and reach out and, and really help um, has been fantastic. Wonderful. You know, it's certainly awesome to see that businesses supporting our community, right? Um, now, Skylar, how can people pitch in and, and get involved? Donate money to, um, to GoFundMe. Donate the money to the GoFundMe? Yes. Yep, that's the best way. And we'll make sure to have that information on our website here, and I'm sure it's on the screen as well. You know, also, we asked your coworkers what they thought about you, Rob. Um, and here's what they had to say. One coworker said, Rob makes everyone and everything better every day. When he started working for Fusillo, he put his mind to building, growing, and accomplishing something that people said couldn't be done. 18 months later, he grows our business every day. There's no doubt in my mind they'll have the same mindset in outf outfitting hundreds of students with backpacks. Isn't that awesome to hear? It really and is. <laughs> I'm sure it's emotional to hear, but it's so powerful. Another said, Rob is one of the most caring and genuine people I know. He has a team spirit and, always, and is always looking out for the whole group of that of himself. I really appreciate the way he is working to pass these characteristics onto his daughter. Oh, God, that is emotional. We need more people like Rob in this world. And Rob, there's, there's more of them. There's more of them. You can read them online at gooddeedsbuffalo.tv. Everyone had something positive to say. We'll be right back to wrap up the show after this. Make sure to follow us on all of the latest social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome back to Good Deeds Buffalo. So Rob, I reached out to ask local businesses and friends via social media so that we could help and reward Skylar and your good deeds, you know what I mean? Um, and you wouldn't guess who jumped right on board to help? Fusillo Hyundai of Grand Island. And with their sub generous support, I'm so happy to gift you guys season passes to Niagara Amusement Park and Splash World and a $50 gift card to use for food, games, and extras while you're there. That's awesome. Thank you so much, man. We really, really appreciate that. <laughs> How exciting is that, Skylar? Niagara Amusement Park in Splash World is an 85-acre amusement park in Grand Island, New York. It features a theme park, water park, and it's adjacent to the KOA campground. Now, did you know that when you visit Fusillo Hyundai of Grand Island, you'll find a dedicated staff of friendly professionals ready to assist you with all of your automotive needs as they strive to provide each and every one of their customers with the best service possible, which is why they take pride in creating a huge first-class buying experience. Whether you like to drive home in a new Hyundai Elantra sedan, pre-owned Hyundai Santa Fe SUV, or a used car of a different make and model, they make the sales process simple and stress-free for your convenience. Visit Fusillo Hyundai in Grand Island for a one-of-a-kind buying experience today. I want to thank Tom Shu, Rob, and Skyler for coming on this show and for doing what you do for our community. I want to thank our gift sponsors, Simply the Best Cleaning, and Fusillo Hyundai of Grand Island. You can learn how to help Tom and Bridget's Battle Foundation, Rob and Skyler, and their Give Back with Backpacks campaign online at gooddeedsbuffalo.tv. 
I want to thank WBBZ for the unwavering support. And until next time, I'm Jordan James, and this is Good Deeds Buffalo. Thanks for watching. Remember, hate is in the moment, love is forever.